So you're telling me that you're a brand new CNC user and you do not know how to set up your X, Y, or Z axis? That's not good. Hey, what's going on guys? If you're a CNC user, part of your process in your whole setup and your whole process from start to finish is zeroing out your X, Y, and Z axis. And if you're a brand new CNC user and you do not know how to do that, I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's a very simple process. It doesn't take too long once you get the hang of it. In this video, I wanna share with you the process that I take. And with many things in the CNC world, you're gonna quickly find out that although you may know a process, you can always alter that process to better fit your needs or whatever you need to do. So follow the process that I use for a little bit. And then if you need to alter that process to your needs. If you are a brand new CNC user and you do not know the steps that you need to follow from start to finish, make sure to take a look at the order of operations video I just recently posted where I show you the 10 steps that you need to follow from start to finish. And lastly, before jumping into the video, I haven't asked in a long time. So if you do like the content that you guys are getting, make sure to like and subscribe and share it. I would really appreciate it. And it just gets the content out there to more viewers. So thank you guys again. And let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So let's assume that you've already entered the dimensions in your job setup screen. And now on your screen, you have a grid, which is a representation of your actual material that is on the CNC. How does the CNC know where the material is at? That's where setting your X and Y and Z axis comes into play. I like to set my X, Y, and Z axis at the lower left-hand corner of the material. So let's assume that in this example right here. When you set your X and Y axis, you're letting the machine know that from this point, the X is here and the Y is here. So now the machine knows that at this border, from this point, this is the border for your Y and the border for your X. When you set your Z axis, let's assume that this is three quarter inch material. To set your Z axis, you're going to bring your end mill all the way to the very top of your material. And at this point is where you set your Z axis. You set your zero for your Z axis. The reason why is because from this point, the machine now can carve into the material, however deep you set it. So this is all theoretical. So let's go ahead and show you what I mean in actual practice. I'm going to give you two examples on how I set my X and Y axis first. In this shot, I'm using a 30 degree V bit as an example. The V bits are a bit easier, no pun intended, to set the X and Y axis in my opinion, because they have a point. I like to use this point and get right up to the corner of my material and then set my X and Y zeros there. It's really easy when you have a sharp point like this one. When I zero my X and Y axis using an end mill, it doesn't have a point to be able to get right up to the corner of the material. What I've recently started doing is splitting the difference of my end mill. I keep half of the end mill on the material and half of it off the material. And that's where I set my X and Y zeros. This is because I'm trying to get as close as I can to the corner with a flat end mill. I haven't had any issues so far, so I'll continue to use this method, but please feel free to improve on this. To set my Z axis, I raise the gantry and move the router somewhere over the material, just anywhere where there's more material than the corner. I then grab a piece of line paper and keep it ready. I then bring down the end mill until I am right above the material. And after some practice, you'll get the hang of going down quickly and slowing down right above the material. When you're near the top of the material, turn down the increment at which your machine lowers and put the paper down below the end mill and begin to move it back and forth while lowering your end mill. Once you start feeling resistance, keep going slower until you are no longer able to slide the paper. At this point, set your Z axis. Once you've set it, raise the end mill and start your job. It's that simple.